Okay, so this is a um, chapter here, topic seven, is we're going to be talking about risk management. So this diagram here is actually a pretty, I, I think it's a nice diagram because it really does kind of explain the whole issues of, you know, security and, and the, things we're, the things we're focused on in terms of security. So if you look at this, you know, we, we've different, you know, kind of the uh, two different stakeholders, obviously owners of an asset and then threat agents against an asset. Um, you know, threat agents give rise to threats that increase the risk of assets or of increased uh, risks against assets. Owners, you know, who value assets will create countermeasures to reduce the risk. So if you look at this, the centerpiece of this is risk. Right? The centerpiece of this on both, you know, between uh, owners and, and threat agents as different stakeholders. At the centerpiece of all this stuff is risk, is risk, you know, increasing risk, reducing risk. <coughs> <clears throat> countermeasures to risk all right so so there's a whole you know and this is one of those centerpiece concepts in this whole idea of information um, information system security it's all about risk and risk management all right so so definitionally comprises the tasks and activities associated with assessing mitigating preventing potential threats to an organization you know, it, it requires you know, and ensures that critical assets are identified and protected appropriately. Once again, you can't protect 100% of 100%. So obviously, you know, part of this process is to evaluate what are critical assets. You know, what are the important, what are the high value assets and to put the appropriate uh, protections around those. And, you know, to identify, you know, other ones that are less risky, but also kind of what and being able to do a an analysis ultimately being able to say okay what makes one asset more um you know one asset is either going to be more highly valued um than another and then you know what are the you know based upon those the risks and the threats against it um you know what are the potential outcomes and then be able to develop a strategy around that all right so that's really kind of the essence of what this whole idea of risk management is around, is about. There's four, when we talk about risk responses, there's really four types of responses here. All right, so first one is this idea of a risk avoidance. Right? So what you do is you're implementing steps to ensure that risk isn't realized. Uh, you know, obviously this is the, this is, you know, the, the, the safest response. But it's not always possible. Remember, you said there's limited assets. You can't you can't do 100% of 100%. So, ideally, you'd like to avoid risk at all costs, you know, in all circumstances. But you know, the reality is, you know, there are going to be circumstances where you're not going to be able to avoid risk. Uh, another response would be a risk transfer. In this case, we pass the risk over to another party. So this is like this is a, you know a shared risk uh, for insurance company. We'll take for example you know, that as an example. Uh, risk mitigation, you know, you don't if you can't avoid it, what you can do is you can mitigate it. So you reduce the level of risk, making it less likely that the either the risk will be realized or, you know, in this case, if you reduce it, you reduce the impact of the risk. And then finally we have risk accept risk risk acceptance. You know, if the cost cost of mitigating or avoiding the risk is way out, outweighs the benefits. Basically, you know, you need to identify and articulate that, you know, the risk exists and understand what the, what the profile, you know, kind of what the circumstances are around that. Right. So those are the four main risk responses we're dealing with. All right. So there's a whole, NIST has got a very thorough um, program around applying risk management, you know, the, their definition of a risk management framework, you know, you know, their focus obviously is for around federal systems. But we'll be looking at this when our case study as well, because part of what our case study is going to be is to kind of call out um, 
you know, the application of a risk management framework and kind of identifying it, identify it, like our particular um, um, case study. So, but this right here, this is the kind of the high level of a risk management framework as NIST has defined. And, you know, once again, it's a, you know, these things are designed, these models are designed as a very formalized, uh, you know, structure where you're, you're kind of methodically going through, um, you know, categorizing, you know, identifying and selecting controls, implementing those controls, doing the assessment of those controls, um, you know, authorization and monitoring. So, so you, you think about this, this is a kind of an ongoing, you know, a circle, as it were, a process by which, you know, you basically identify, uh, you know, identify what the risks are, identify the appropriate controls, implement them, assess them, you know, and then monitor, uh, you know, authorize, deploy, monitor, and then repeat. So from a NIST perspective, your definition of this stuff, you know, promote near real-time risk management and ongoing information system authorization through continuous monitoring. So it's really the, it's not a one-time event. It's really designed to be a, a, a process, an ongoing process. Um, you know, the idea, you know, what we focus on are things like, uh, you know, be able to make cost-effective risk-based decisions. More importantly, the idea is also you, you want to embed or you know, align the uh, information, you know, the information security into the enterprise architecture, into the application development lifecycle. Remember, as we said, is you know, the thing about security, security actually parallels everything you we see in things like enterprise architecture and application development. There's a security dimension to it. So what we are still trying to do is is organize this stuff. Um, and keep it in structured in such a way so that you know we can you know we can deal with the both the enterprise architect you know the aspects of enterprise architecture and development app development that um, are associated with this. Yeah. In addition, we want to link risk management processes at the information level to you know auto, not just simply this whole idea of risk management is not really limited. It's not simply an IT thing. It's kind of across the board. So there's an organizational risk management. So this is really the application of risk management, you know, kind of the big risk management down to the risk management, you know, around, um, you know, within information technology. And finally, you know, what we want to do is we want to establish uh, responsibility and accountability for, for the controls within an organization, who, you know, who is responsible for this stuff, who is accountable for this, so we stay on top of it, that they are implemented and implemented correctly, and they are monitored. So, you know, RMF has got, you know, because it's kind of a step through the process, you know, basically a, you know, categorization, define, you know, put a systems description, kind of register it, make sure you have, you can track it. Second step is to select the controls. You know, what are the controls that are out there? You know, and this document actually describes a lot of this. So this stuff is not necessarily something that you have to you know make up out of thin air. There's actually a, a lot of reference information that can kind of be pulled. It's really more a matter of applying it to particular to the particular cert, particularities of your situation. All right, um, you know, basically developing different strategies around monitoring and you know getting an, an approval. As you can see, it's very formalized. So it's a very formalized kind of structure. Implementation of the controls. You know, implement the plans that you, you've identified out there. And you document everything. So a lot of this stuff is very, as I said, a, you know, kind of a very formalized kabuki dance, if you, as it were, kind of view of, of how you implement this stuff. Step four is the assessment. You know, basically, you assess the controls in accordance with the assessment procedures. Um, and then you prepare a report for it. And then you uh, do a review of that report. And then you do remediation, the recommendations of what the remediations would need to be. Uh, step five is the offer, you know, the information systems authorization. So you're, 
this is more of a kind of a, a formalized step within the organization. And then finally, monitoring. So the idea of, you know, impact assessing what's going on, what's happening, once again, conducting remediations, update the plans as, as we go, right? And then it's like kind of just more of a formalized process with you know, reporting status, you know, on an ongoing basis to the organization around decision making. So this is a, uh, so once again, we'll be talking more about this when we do our case study. All right. So we'll, uh, but we'll, we'll come back to this. All right. Uh, a couple of different things we've got out here. There's a couple of different control frameworks. So there's a lot of, it's not just simply, you know, NIST has got one, but other ones are out here. You know, there's other um, frameworks, for example, uh, the Committee for Sponsoring Organizations, a.k.a. COSO, basically uh, within that model has got a number of different, five different areas around um, data integrity that, that gets called out. ITIL, which is actually around operations best practices for computer operations and systems delivery. Uh, they have 34 books outlining practices for this. COBIT, which is a um, kind of a enterprise architecture-ish security model. Basically, they have a four domain model for governance outlining 34 processes and 214 control objectives. ISO has got a bunch of stuff. And then finally, you know, uh, NIST, NIST, the SP 853, they have 300 controls across 18 different families. So you see these all frameworks, <coughs> you know, some have different, maybe some different focus areas. So, you know, ITIL is around service and service delivery, an operational focus. You know, ISO is more of a, uh, you know, it, it more is, is broader in its implications, but they all have, they're all kind of doing the same thing. In a lot of ways, different perspectives of the same thing, right. and that is it for our discussions of the risk management framework.